Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Brittany and I'm part of the adult services team here at the Tulare Public Library. Today I will be rep I will be presenting Black Stories, a special readers advisory program in honor of Black History Month, which we celebrate in the month of February. We honor this month not only by looking back at our history, but by celebrating and engaging with Black voices and experiences of today. In particular, I'll do this by highlighting some Black authors and books that are in the San Joaquin Valley Library System and available for checkout. Um, I myself have recently read these books as well, and they made a really strong impact on me, um, so I definitely wanted to share with our patrons. Um, I'm going to cover only a brief selection today, but my hope is that this serves as the jumping off point for many other works by Black writers and artists that you can read and explore both this month and beyond. And again, like I mentioned earlier, there is no shortage of reading lists by Black authors circulating, um, and you can always give us a call at the Tulare Public Library if you have any questions or need reading suggestions. So let's go ahead and get started with our first selection. I'm going to stop my video here so everyone can fully enjoy the slideshow. All right, so first up on our recommendation list is Well Read Black Girl, edited by Glory Edom, who is pictured on the slide here. This book is a selection of nonfiction essays by 21 Black women novelists, nonfiction writers, poets, and playwrights. These writers span different generations, cultural origins, and backgrounds. The book includes essays by writers such as Rebecca Walker, who is the daughter of the Color Purple author Alice Walker, authors like Jesmyn Ward, Tiari Jones, Barbara Smith, Marita Golden, Gabourey Sidibe, N.K. Jemison, Lynn Nottage, Mahogany L. Brown, and Jacqueline Woodson, among others. Glory Edom founded the Well-Read Black Girl Book Club in 2015, which inspired the, um, this book coming together. With the focus of amplifying the voices of Black women writers, it has turned into a national community and annual literary festival. Each essay in this book explores the topic of representation and tries to answer the question, when did each of these women first find true, relatable, and multidimensional characters in literature in whom they saw themselves reflected? When did they first see not only themselves, but accurate reflections of their families, communities, and friends? This book helps the reader think more deeply about race, gender, and hegemony, no matter what your own background, culture, or race may be. It really begs the question, which representations of Black women are widespread and which are often missing? How much diversity is included in the literary canon on the whole and how much is overlooked? This book invites the reader to engage and I often found myself thinking, as a reader myself, how do I reinforce or challenge these representations? And as a reader, how am I internalizing those representations or lack thereof? I also highly recommend this book because it includes multiple reading lists so that you can continue exploring Black stories. For example, it includes every selection that the Well-Read Black Girl Book Club has read since its inception, as well as the following lists. Science fiction and fantasy written by Black women, poetry by Black women, books about Black girlhood and friendship, classic novels by Black women, books on Black feminism, and plays by Black women. This book is the perfect selection for those that may want to sample many different author writing styles to find who you'd like to read more of, as well as grow their reading list for greater inclusion and celebration of Black women's voices. All right, next up is our second recommendation, which is A Lucky Man by Jamel Brinkley. This is a collection of nine fictional short stories that focus on Black men and boys testing the limits of relationships, social norms, and their own definitions of masculinity. There is a real sense of intimacy in this book because these characters explore these ideas most frequently in relation to their fathers, brothers, mothers, and friends. Explored within the inextricable context of race, gender, and class, these stories vividly convey the tension between social codes of masculinity and the vulnerable, volatile self. 
This quote from the New Yorker Review stood out to me because it really articulates what I think is one of the most engaging and dynamic comparisons and narrative threads that runs through each of these short stories. Looking through the eyes of each of these characters, the author explores and invites the reader to explore questions like, how do social codes of masculinity affect, restrict, or even dictate the thoughts and actions of these characters? Who are they outside of that framework? How does Black masculinity specifically frame these stories? As with our first selection, this book is an incredible piece of writing that explores Black stories through the lenses of race, gender, and hegemony. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, this book was nominated for multiple literary awards in both 2018 and 2019, all very well deserved. Um, so I really, really encourage you to read A Lucky Man by Jamel Brinkley. My final book recommendation today is Power to the People, The World of the Black Panthers by Stephen Shames and Bobby Seale. This book is historical nonfiction with plenty of photojournalism to accompany it. Stephen Shames, who is pictured on the left here, took all of the photographs featured in this book and is a photojournalist who started documenting the organization very early on after its inception in 1966. Bobby Seale, pictured here to the right of Stephen James, is the co-founder of the Black Panther Party, a political activist and author who later, became, who later became a mayoral candidate and traveling speaker, among other things. In the words of Bobby Seale and other primary leadership of the Black Panther Party, the book lays out the 10-point platform on which the Black Panther Party was founded, which reflected the objectives of the group rooted in Black community empowerment, pride, and activism. This book gives an overview of the social, economic, educational, and safety programs the Black Panthers instituted. Some examples of which are the Free Breakfast for School Children program, which started in Oakland and spread nationwide, free community health clinics, cooperative housing programs, free clothing programs, youth programs, and more. This book also reveals the targeted response of local and federal law enforcement, including the FBI's COINTELPRO, which stood for Counterintelligence Program, a program that targeted American activists that were active in the Black and anti-Vietnam War movements. In learning more about the Black Panther Party through this book and looking generally at the way that history and movements are framed, there are two questions we can consider. The first being story ownership. Who is telling the story and how were they involved? In this book, we are going straight to the source by reading Bobby Seale's story. We can then look at how the story is presented or changed depending on the source and depending how other parties were involved in the movement. The second question to consider is the idea of making history versus framing history. Within this context, as we read, we can really think about, again, who is telling the story? How were they involved? What were their goals and objectives? What political, historical, cultural, racial, or gendered factors are at play in how the story is told? And what then becomes the widely disseminated messaging about that history or movement? This book provides an amazing opportunity to not only learn more about this organization, but to ask ourselves the questions above in the context of this particular movement and the Black Panther Party. This was a really informative, fascinating book. Again, the fact that it contains so many photographs of the area really drive um, the founding principles and the community programs um, that were instituted under the Black Panther Party really drives those homes. I would highly recommend it to anyone who doesn't know much about the Black Panther Party or would like to know more specifically from the people that were building the movement on the ground um, what exactly it was about. All right, so that completes our book recommendations. Last but not least, I'd like to highlight material from our virtual library, specifically our Gale database, Archives Unbound. 
In honor of Black History Month, we'll be looking specifically at the African American Studies and African Studies sections of this Archives Unbound database, which we're going to do now. So I'm going to go ahead and escape here. The way that you would get to our virtual library, our research um, and databases section, is to go to our website, tulerepubliclibrary.org. On our homepage here, you'll notice as we scroll down that I want to click on research and databases. All of our databases are alphabetized, so I don't have to go very far at all to find Gale Primary Sources Archives Unbound, which I'm going to click into. Um, for, those of the, for those of you that are just interested in learning more about these movements, um, some of these organizations and people, this is a really, really fabulous database. But I also wanted to point out, for those of you that have kids at home, students that are working on research papers, um, you know, particularly if it's related to Black History Month, this is a really, really great primary source to use for those research papers, for those five paragraph essays. So I really encourage you, beyond even what I'm showing you today to really poke around because there are some, um, there's a treasure trove of information here. So for our purposes today, let's go into African American studies. So I'm just going to click here. All right, so now that we are in the explore collections section, you can scroll through and you'll notice there are a variety of collections that you can explore. Um, you might recognize the photo of this gentleman that we just discussed, but I'm going to take you down for an example and show you the Ralph Bunchy Oral Histories collection on the civil rights movement. Now, this database is really fabulous because it shows you where the source material is coming from, the date range that it covers. It will give an overview and then you can either search the collection with particular keywords, depending on what you're looking for, or if you're just curious what exists, we can click on view all documents in this collection. Now, you'll notice here that there are 599 manuscripts. You can sort however you want. I'm just going to scroll through and see what kind of catches my interest. Now, again, these are going to be personal oral histories by people that were involved directly in the civil rights movement. I'm going to click here on Adelaide Tate, an activist in the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, the SNCC for short. SNCC is another organization that I highly recommend looking into, researching if you don't know much about them or if you only know a little about them. Um, they played a very pivotal role in the civil rights movement um, and are, you know, it's a great, great part of American history to know. So I'm going to click here. When I click, it's going to take me to the document. It'll give me notes. It'll give me the ability to click through to different pages. I can zoom in if I can't quite see the small text or zoom out if I want it to be a little bit smaller. I really love this collection because just like we talked about in our last slide in regards to story ownership, this is the best way to hear directly from the source what these Black Americans' experiences were during the Civil Rights Movement, during this time in history, during their activism. Um, I always find it incredibly fascinating to be able to read firsthand accounts, and this is a treasure trove um, <clears throat> of valuable material in that regard. So I know that I mentioned if you have students at home, this is a great resource, a great database to use. I wanted to point out another feature here. If you are using this for another reason other than, you know, fulfilling your curiosity, if you are using it for a school paper or research paper, I want to point out that you can click on view full citation over here on the left and it will give you how to cite this document in a paper. You can also find this section here at the top under site. And here it's going to give me either the MLA or the APA, as well as the Chicago 17th or Harvard um, editions of how to cite this material. You can also download, print, or send articles that you find particularly interesting. Um, 
Yeah, I just, I feel like I could spend all day on this site if I didn't have other things to do. Um, so I really highly encourage you to explore. I think this is, you know, a, a really wonderful database um, that, that we could all as patrons take more advantage of. Um, so I'm gonna go back really quickly to Archives Unbound here. There's also, I wanted to show you an African studies section. For our purposes, I'm going to leave the demonstration there, but know that this is also something that you can explore the manuscripts for, the interviews, um, the governmental document documentation, forgive me, um, and it's that's a very interesting section as well. So, uh, this concludes our Reader's Advisory Program today. I know it was brief, but again, I'm just really hoping that you um, find and enjoy these books and use this as a stepping stone on your journey for exploring um, uh, additional Black writers and work that amplify the voices, experiences, cultures, and contributions of Black Americans. Be sure to check out our Tulare Public Library website calendar, as well as social media pages for additional Black History Month features and programming. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really do appreciate it. And until next time, take care, everyone.